One of the most satisfying and well-regarded elements of the God of War franchise has been the gameplay and the combat. Those brutal executions, those epic set pieces, the combos, the calling of the Leviathan Axe, and of course, the pure feelings of becoming a god. So it's been quite strange to me that Sony Santa Monica has not shown too much of the gameplay or combat, save a few clips here and there in their marketing efforts for God of War Ragnarok. Until now, with nearly two weeks to go for this game's release, we now have a good bit of gameplay that we can break down and analyze. Dr. Poop Love here, and today I wanna break down the latest gameplay reveal for God of War Ragnarok. And stick around to the end because I still think there are a few open questions that still need to be answered, but let's get right into it. And where we should start is with what hasn't changed, at least from what we have seen, and that is the weapons. Now, don't get me wrong, there are definitely some changes to these weapons that we will talk about, but it seems that you will at least be starting this game with your Leviathan Axe, your Blades of Chaos, and your shield. It also still seems that you'll be able to command Atreus to do things like fire arrows. Maintaining this base of gameplay is very intriguing as it becomes a place for Sony Santa Monica to build off of and expand. Rather than having Kratos start from scratch, it seems that he will be largely starting this game with a more full arsenal, much like he had by the end of God of War 2018, and we will be able to build up from there. And so with that, we can talk about some of the expansions that we have seen in the gameplay highlighted thus far. Notably, the Blades of Chaos will have this grapple functionality, which will allow Kratos to be able to be more mobile and provides for more traversal options. This, along with this new kind of pre-fall attack where you can take down enemies from above, will allow Kratos to play around more easily with more verticality that is occurring with in these level designs. Kratos also wields different shield types that seem to have their own special abilities for blocking and attacking. Sony Santa Monica mentioned that Kratos' ability to parry and block will be much more versatile in this game, and it definitely shows in what they've showed us. Atreus also seems to have more abilities that you can potentially command, and he pretty much seems to have his own full moveset, which makes me wonder if he will be actually playable in certain sections of the game. And from the sounds of it, you will be able to have more choice in which weapons you will get to perform finishing moves with, and Sony Santa Monica implies that moves from prior God of War games may make its way into this version. Beyond Kratos and Atreus are the actual enemies they are facing, and they are much more varied in both size and movesets. Sony Santa Monica explains that each realm will have its own set of enemies and describes facing them as a chess game, where it appears that you will have to analyze the enemy movements and attacks to determine the best approach to taking them down. This seems to make enemy combat a puzzle in and of its own right, which is very intriguing. They also discussed how they looked throughout the whole series at various set pieces to influence and evolve battles that occur in this game as Kratos and Atreus encounter the various bosses. Another interesting change to note are the visual effects and changes to the way things appear. There are these combat indicators that appear on the screen when an enemy is attacking you. For instance, there are these colored rings that appear that seem to let you know what kind of attack is coming and which will allow players to know whether they can block or dodge a various attack. Additionally, Sony Santa Monica discussed how they're able to use the camera in new and interesting ways now that they have adjusted to the close-up camera that they incorporated for God of War 2018. And so with all this, you realize that things are going to be looking pretty good for this game. And so with all that we can expect for this game in terms of gameplay and combat changes, I'm still left with some questions that I'm sure will be answered very soon. The first is, if Kratos seems to be starting off fully powered, how much further will that power evolve? Will we be getting any new weapons, or in what ways beyond what was shown will combat progress, as any fun game of this sort requires that 
progression and leveling up. My next question is, given how much Atreus seems to have evolved, will we be getting to play as him? He seems to have his own interesting and unique moveset that could provide some very interesting variety to the combat, should we get the chance to play as him. I also would just love to see more lengthy, drawn out and raw gameplay sections of maybe a mini boss or some level in this game. But I know this game is coming out so soon and we're gonna be able to see plenty of that. So while we wait, Sony seems to be making some interesting moves with their flagship IPs that could have an impact for the future of God of War and other PlayStation titles. And so you should check out this video, which discusses what that might look like. But otherwise, so long, Pooper Troopers.